The Confessions of St. Augustine, Book 9, Chapter 12, following. What then was it which did grievously pain me within, but a fresh wound wrought through the sudden wrench of that more sweet and dear custom of living together? I joyed indeed in her testimony, when, in that her last sickness, mingling her endearments with my acts of duty, she called me dutiful, and mentioned with great affection of love that she never had heard any harsh or reproachful sound uttered by my mouth against her. But yet, O oh my God, who made us, what comparison is there betwixt that honor that I paid to her and her slavery for me? Being then forsaken of so great comfort in, in her, my soul was wounded, and that life went to send her as it were. Which of hers and mine together had been made but one? The boy then, being stilled from weeping, heard used to cap the psalter and began to sing our whole house, answering him the psalm, I will sing of mercy and judgments to you, O Lord. But hearing what we were doing, many brethren and religious women came together, and while they, whose office it was, made ready for the burial, as the manner is, I, in a part of the house where I might properly, together with those who thought not fit to leave me, discoursed upon something fitting the time. And by this balm of truth assuaged that torment known to you, they, and knowing and listening intently, and conceiving me to be without all sense of sorrow. But in your ears where none of them heard, I blamed the weakness of my feelings, and refrained my flood of grief, which gave way a little unto me. But again came as with the tide, Yet not as, yet not so as to burst out into tears, nor to change of countenance. Still I knew what I was keeping down in my heart. And being very much displeased that these human things had such power over me, which in the due order and appointment of our natural condition must needs come to pass, with a new grief I grieved for my grief, and was thus and was thus worn by a double sorrow. And behold, the corpse was carried to the burial. We went and returned without tears, for neither in those prayers which we poured forth unto you, when the sacrifice of our ransom was offered for her, when now the corpse was by the grave side, as the manner there is, previous to its being laid therein, did I weep, even during those prayers. Yet was I the whole day in secret heavily sad, and with troubled mind prayed you, as I could, to heal my sorrow. Yet you did not, impressing, I believe, upon my memory by this one instance, how strong is the bond of all habit, even upon the soul, which now feeds upon no deceiving word. It seemed also good to me to go and bathe, having heard that the bath had its name, Balneum, from the Greek Balaneion, for that it drives sadness from the mind. And this also I confess unto your mercy, Father of the fatherless, that I bathed and was the same as before I bathed. For the bitterness of sorrow could not exclude out of my heart. Then I slept and woke up again, and found my grief not a little softened. And as I was alone in my bed, I remembered those two verses of your Ambrose. For you are the maker of all the Lord, and ruler of the height, who, rubbing day in light, has poured soft slumbers over the night, that to our limbs the power of toil may be renewed. 
and hearts be raised that sink and cower, and sorrows be subdued. And then by little and little I recovered my former thoughts of your handmaid, her holy conversation towards you, her holy tenderness and observance towards us, whereof I was suddenly deprived. And I was minded to weep in your sight for her and for myself, in her behalf and in my own. And I gave way to the tears which I before restrained, to overflow as much as they desired, reposing my heart upon them, and it found rest in them, for it, for it was in your ears, not in those of man, who would have scornfully interpreted my weeping. And now, Lord, in writing I confess it unto you. Read it not who will and interpret it how he will, and if he finds sin therein, that I wept my mother for a small portion of an hour, the mother who, for the time, was dead to mine eyes, who had for many years wept for me that I might live in your eyes. Let him not deride me, but rather, if he, if he be one of, char of large charity, let him weep himself for my sins unto you, the Father of all the brethren of your Christ.